Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm Dai to a little bit just to refresh myself and get started for the next uh, phase of our process. So I mentioned in the last episode that we've completed the initial benchmark, which is the internal money sending. And I also mentioned the plan for the next benchmark. And for the next benchmark, we are going to work on our payment gateway. So at the moment, we're able to add money to our account using Paystack, or we can send money to each other. However, we want to remove Paystack from the old loop. We want to create our own solution. But before we delve into the old coding, everything, I thought it makes sense to kind of dispose the flow. And that's the kind of what FinTech is all about. The flow is very important, such that knowing those flow makes you a FinTech expert. So that's what we are going to discuss and to make preparation in order to undo adding money into our account using card. So to kind of express this discussion, I'm going to be using a whiteboard where we're going to draw what we feel at the process. Then when we've established what we need to do, then we can now move it into maybe system design. And on a big note, system designs mainly involves us understanding what we are trying to build and knowing the adequate resources to use to undo it. So that's the whole stroke about uh, system design. But before we even get into system design, we need to understand the concept of what we are trying to do. So on our screen, we want to talk about card payments. And the reason why we are talking about card payments is because that's the interface we are currently using for our paystack integration. So I don't have the system running, but obviously if you go through the system on what we've done so far, you find out that for us to add money to our system, we open up the paystack pop-up where we can automatically add money. But technically, if you were to be a live environment, it will require you to add in your card. So that process is what we want to venture into. So yeah, card payments, how does this even came about and what are the players in this scenario? So I'm pretty sure if we are quite familiar with the financial technology world, card payment is not a new thing. And this is an avenue through which you can pay for a lot of services, usually associated with points of service. So you pay through your card into different uh, retail stores. And also in the usual fashion, you pay with your card to add money into your accounts. So how does this whole process really work? So in order for us to undo card payment, there must be a card, okay? So the question for this would be, where does cards generate from? How do we even generate a card? And prior to this time, my thought process has usually been that financial institutions or issuers that want to generate card reach out to card merchants to generate card for their customers. However, after further digging, I've been able to establish that Cards are actually generated by the financial services, by the issuer itself. So let me create a box to represent our current um, financial institution, and that would be FinGrid. So FinGrid is the current financial institution we have. And for FinGrid to provide card for its customers, at the moment on FinGrid, we have two customers. We have Account1 and Adifemi Grid. So for FinGrid to provide card for its customer, FinGrid has to generate it. So let's represent the two customers. So now the intention is for FinGrid to generate card for Adifemi grades and then account one. So to achieve that, FinGrid has to collaborate with another player called the card networks. And when I'm talking about card networks, I'm pretty sure we are familiar with that. These networks each represent the kind of cards we use. So some of the common ones include Visa, which I believe is quite popular. And also we have MasterCard. So we have others as well. We have Discovery and we have a lot of them. And each card network has something to denote them. So for instance, I'm not even sure about this time. I'm not really taking note of what um, denotes each card network. But obviously they have a unique number that denotes that this particular card information belongs to this network. So for an assumption, I would say Visa starts its cards with four. That's an assumption, probably something else, but I'll assume a card that starts with four is probably a Visa card. So 420 and so on, we'll move on. And maybe for MasterCard, it starts its own with five, two, and so on, then move on. So this information are what the card network provides. But further to that, the card network also provides integration through which they can communicate with your financial institutions. So now the question would now be, how does this card networks collaborate? Did they just magically determine what number they want to bear or there's an agreement? So the answer to that is there is an agreement through which each card network registers their number within the global network or global repository. There's something around that um, 
line. But that's the whole idea. Furthermore, in order for the collaboration between the financial institutions and the cabinet network to work, there needs to be a unique identification. So initially, this is usually called BIN or Bank Identification Number by this. So this was what it used to be. So this is the equation number that is associated with the card, such that once the card network is identified, you can easily identify the issuer of the card. And due to the interaction or integration between the issuer and the card network, you can furthermore validate whatever transaction you want to make. However, this has been changed from BIM to IIN. So now we have IIN, which stands for issuer identification number. So we had a lot of things to discuss here, and I don't think we want to bore ourselves too much about discussion. So as a result of that, we're going to go into the summary of what we are trying to achieve with the whole thing in order to actually handle card payments. So in regards to that, yeah, what we really want to do. We want to create a global repository, so I'm going to put that down. Global repository. And the global repository is going to hold information about all the possible card networks we can have. So in our case, we are going to work with one for now. However, in the future, we can expand and create more. And for our case, we are going to be creating a card network called FinSA just something related to visa don't want to do us adding a lot of words to meet up with mastercard so FinSA is the card network we are going to have then from the global repository we are going to have the card network itself the card network itself is also going to be a system on its own that is able to undo the connection between itself and other financial institutions so on that year we are going to have FinSA. Then from FISA, we are going to have our financial institution, Prime East, like that. And for our financial institution, we already have Prime Greeks. So the connection between FISA and our financial institution is going to evolve an API integration. And within this API integration, we are expected to expose some endpoints. So we need an endpoint to be able to undo verification. So more like do we want the transaction to be direct? Where if you enter your card PIN, then the transaction is automatically validated. Or do we want an authentication flow? So let's put that down. So here we have exposed endpoints for authentication. Okay. So we're going to expose endpoints for authentication. And we're going to expose endpoints for validation so that means FinSA is going to be integrating with two endpoints from FinBridge is going to be our financial institution so FinBridge is an example here which means FinSA is going to be operating as an interface through which these endpoints are available so now how does our payment gateway communicate with this so at the moment we have paystack which we use but eventually we are also going to create our own payment gateway which we've not figured out a name for but i'll explain the communication here so let's say we have a payment gateway as this ball. So I'll call it payment gateway PG. So PG is going to take information about our card. And based on the card information we've entered into the payment gateway PG, it's going to determine which card network the card belongs to. So once PG discovers that the card network is FISA, PG transfers the request to FISA. So PG informs FISA that, okay, there is a request to perform a transaction on your network. Then FISA determines the issuer based on the unique information on the card network. So FISA is now able to determine that this card belongs to Finbricks. So the communication comes down to Finbricks. And based on the integration between FISA and Finbricks, FISA is able to determine if this transaction or this communication requires an authentication before validation, or you can just validate directly. So based on that, that's where you get the interface where you need to either enter your PIN on the 
institution or it sends an OTP, okay? So after that, if there's validation, which prompts fill rate, okay? We have every reason to believe that this transaction can be carried out. And as a result of that, we want to pull out money from you and send to somewhere else. And the whole sending to somewhere else is where our settlement system will come in, which is another thing in its entirety. We are going to get there in the future, but I believe we get the whole idea. So that's the card payment flow in a nutshell. And this is more like a quick explanation as to what we'll be doing next. So based on this, we can all figure out that, okay, our next point of action will be to set a global repository or registry. Yeah, I think that's another thing is proud. Registry. And that's not going to be a big deal because it's more like a registry for validation, okay? For now, the only card network we have will be FISA. So I need to set up FISA to be able to accept integration from different financial institutions. Then we need to come back to Fingrate to implement the endpoints that FISA would need to be able to carry out the registration. Then we're going to come back to Fingrate to implement card generation through integration with FISA because obviously FISA is going to have its allocated number. That is the summary and yeah, I'm looking forward to it. So we'll be adding up here today and in the next episode, we're going to have a more robust system design where we're going to walk through how we're going to perform all the operations, the programming language we'll be exploring and our best to actually figure it out. So there you have it guys. Again, if you've not subscribed, I would encourage us to do so because I believe this is starting out to be a wonderful series. It's actually very interesting to me and I'm looking forward to see how it pans out. Bye for now. I'll see you in the next one.